many hats, but the one I'm most uh, connected and I'm most proud of is uh, being a teacher. And I write that everywhere I write, I'm a teacher uh, above everything else. Um, it was teachers actually in my life who saved my life and who enriched my life and who helped me do whatever little I can do today. There are particularly two incidents that uh, turned me towards um, the importance of teaching and doing more and more in education later in life. I was born in uh, Ladakh, a very, very tiny village um, of some five households only. And I say always, today it is so much bigger. It's 100% bigger with 10 households. Yeah? So we didn't have a school and therefore I didn't get to go to school. And uh, in a way, I was spared a lot of uh, uh, difficult childhoods that I saw others having while I had a great time um, growing up and learning on the fields with farmers, with animals, with plants that miraculously <clears throat> grew from a little seed into a flowering plant and I could see what leaves, roots, shoots were without having to memorize these words. And yet at eight and a half, I was dragged into a school um, and it became a very, very, very bitter experience after that. And it actually ended my true learning. Um, so I have seen, I have seen different kinds of teachers, teachers who made me feel the worst of me uh, in me and teachers who rescued me and made me feel great about myself and made me feel like doing more and more. So the first schools that I was taken, the teachers were very, very unsympathetic and uh, they couldn't understand that I came from a very different background. I didn't understand the language they spoke. I didn't and couldn't relate to the books. And yet, rather than understanding my problems, they would make me either stand on a bench or sit in the back row or stand outside the classroom for the whole period, as if that would help me more than keeping me right in front of them when I couldn't even understand what they were saying. So I always say that was the only way I was an outstanding student at that age. Yeah? <laughs> Spent more of my time outside the classroom. Um, that was a time when I really felt small and wondered why I had ever come to this earth as a burden. Why shouldn't I quit and all that. Then I ran away from that school. The good sense that prevailed was that I took charge of my own things and I ran away to another school in, in Delhi. At the age of 12, I just traveled alone um, and it was more complicated than that. The bus I took met an accident and I had to change, I think, five buses. And I remember I couldn't even reach the ticket booth uh, to see the face of the person selling the ticket, he would only see my hands asking for a ticket to the next city and the next. And finally, I got to Delhi uh, to a school that was very interesting, very poorly equipped school <clears throat> um, by the government of India for the children from frontier areas, tribal areas. Uh, and... Uh, I had difficulties uh, getting admission there uh, first few days. Many children were waiting to get admission. Again, I waited with them in a, uh, what do you call, like a uh, sarai, <clears throat> in a vihara. And then again, I took things in my own hands, went to the school rather than waiting for something to happen to the group met the principal and I said, I want admission in your school. And he was so um, overwhelmed by this 12 year old coming uh, on his own that he said, you come from tomorrow, we'll admit you. So that was how I, how I got into that school. And 
very interestingly, the teachers here were completely of a different kind. It was poorly equipped, but the teachers were as good or uh, better than you would have your parents. They really were very caring, nurturing, would spend all the time beyond school hours in the school, helping children, not only with books, but with music, extracurricular activities. And some of these teachers made me feel that I was not the nothing I was made to feel there. And they gave me hope that I could do something very soon from being like at the verge of failure in each class, having come from this uh, rough childhood. Suddenly they made me feel that I was very good in science. I was very good in English and they would help. They, they perhaps saw that I could do something. They perhaps saw beyond the broken language I spoke because that was not me. Behind that, perhaps I, I was a curious child who could do much more and they could see beyond the face and the, uh, the broken language I spoke and gave me all that it took. And very soon I started doing quite well in class, uh, became one of the best in the class and was um, encouraged to participate in debates and poetry and plays and theater of all kinds. And I started flowering. That's when I realized what teachers can do to children. You know, they can make you feel you are a burden on the earth and they can make you feel you are chosen to do something very important in this world. So that was one experience that stayed in the back of my mind. I didn't quite understand at that time that I had to do something in education. <clears throat> much later, much later when I was doing my engineering, this is the second uh, encounter with teaching and education. When I was doing my engineering, I had some financial issues with my family and I decided to finance my engineering myself. Um, and for that I had to earn and I couldn't do many things to earn at that age. So I chose to teach, which was a passion uh, because I loved science and maths and I saw students in their 10th grade in Ladakh used to face lots of problems. They would fail by the thousands. 95% of the students every year used to fail in the board exams, the matriculation exams. And so I thought I could help teach some of these students and that would finance my own engineering. So I went in my vacations from my engineering college to teach and earn while my college would go on industrial tours all over the country. I took leave and went and taught. And uh, during this teaching, things I saw changed my life forever. One thing I saw was that these students who were blamed for being good for nothing, they used to fail as I said, 95% each time. And teachers who in those days mostly came from outside Ladakh because we didn't have enough teachers who didn't understand that it is a different culture. People speak a different language and the books are full of examples that make no sense whatsoever in this context of high mountains with minus 20, minus 30 winters. Children are made to memorize F for fan. Why, however, would a child understand that a fan makes you feel cool? In minus 20, that's the last thing you want to feel. <laughs> so, of course, this is one example and it's full of such examples that children cannot relate and therefore used to fail and they couldn't speak the language, express in the language. <clears throat> so I, I saw while teaching that there was nothing wrong with them. They were so bright, they were so curious. When taught in the ways they understand, they could understand every intricate physics, maths, whatever. So that was when I thought it's fine to 
you know, finance my engineering, which I could do more than I ever imagined. I came to lay to teach only to finance that year's college. And I thought next year I'd earn for the next years. My course was so successful that in that very winter, I earned enough for all the three years of engineering and even more. So that, in a way, uh, demonetized me, if I may say. I lost the craze for money, money at that early age, you know, when all engineering students are about going for the highest paying job and all that. I could see that I can make in two months enough for more than for three years. So this can be done anytime. There are more interesting things. There are so many bright minds shackled in this system that makes them feel good for nothing, but they are so very bright. So it's, it's much better to do something important for their lives. And that was a time when I, I say I had this realization that you know, life is not just about what I need, it's more about what needs me. And I saw in these bright uh, children that changing something about this system and helping them needs me more than the system needs an engineer. So I started thinking more and more from then about engineering some change in the system so that these children are not made to feel like failures for no fault of theirs. After I finished my engineering, with half my mind and heart already into education, I quickly started uh, with fellow friends, a uh, system of teaching more of such students who were verge of failure. Soon we realized that if we keep repairing these broken products, we'd be doing this for decades and the system will keep producing products for us to repair. A better solution is to go to the source and change it so that they're not broken in the first place. And you don't have to do the charity of helping them. They could be flying on their own. So that's when <clears throat> we started bringing reforms in the education system in every way possible, partnering with the government, training the teachers, changing the textbooks, organizing the people into village education committees to take ownership of the school. And very soon results started showing the 5% pass went up to finally 75, but we were not happy with that because even 25% is a large number. Nobody should come out with the feeling of failure after spending a quarter of their lives. So we started focusing on those who were failing still. And we, did, we made a special school for them, for those who failed. The criteria of admission was that they failed, not their marks or percentage. And <clears throat> we were more than surprised that if we teach the way they learn, rather than, you know, if they didn't learn the way we teach, things are very, very different. It, children often are more oriented to learn by doing things rather than just listening or scribbling. This is anyway not a natural way that human young ones learn or any young ones learn in nature. They always learn by experiencing. So we designed for them to experience things and learn. And the magic was that uh, I'll give some examples, one student who had come had failed 10th grade five times before he came to the school and suddenly something sparked in him and uh, he got the confidence that I can do something, started working on his own day and night. Therefore, I feel it's not so much that we need to teach, teach them, but we, make, we need to make them feel they can learn. We need to make them feel they are, you know, able to, they can, that can do feeling is what we can by and large give them. And after that, they do most of it. We only need to just facilitate them. And if that can do and confidence of, uh, and the desire to do uh, this spirit of, you know, doing it yourself, uh, the drive within, doesn't come, then you can arrange the best of labs and equipments and smart classes and things. They won't 
want to make use of them. So therefore, I have seen that this spark, whenever it rises in a student, they start doing everything it takes because now it's the onus is theirs. It's not the teacher's burden to make them study or learn or something. As long as they are driven, they drive their own path. And this student very soon started shining. You know, he would say, I was contemplating suicide uh, before coming to the school. And very soon he did very well and went out, became a journalist and later he was taken into politics by the village uh, to, to represent them. And he became the education minister for the Hill Council of Ladakh. A five times failure. Not because we did some magic in teaching this person, but because that spark is what happened. And then he taught himself. So there are many, many such stories where the lost souls, you know, find discover themselves and that's the best part i feel of uh, teaching because you can make people do their whatever it takes and uh, achieve their dreams and it doesn't take too much from a teacher or a school but it makes such a world of difference in them from thinking they are nothing to feeling that they can do and achieving what they want to. This was my own story and I've seen it repeated in so many students, especially from this category of those who were failing. So if those who the so-called failing can do so well, of course, others can do even better or equally good, as long as they are given this environment of, uh, of self-worth and you know confidence to do and uh, yeah that's uh, what I would say a teacher can do best is to give them uh, this uh, self-worth and this can do uh, self-respect and esteem um, and I have seen many such students from very very uh, rough and difficult backgrounds once they know the game and to play it they do very well when they are driven by their own uh, energy within so i would say that um, teaching is one of the most fulfilling uh, engagements you can ever get into because you can change the lives of others. And when you see one such life change, that becomes your inspiration. Many people ask me, so who is your inspiration? I really don't think of any big and famous person as my inspiration. And I'm happier that way because such inspirations sometimes, you know, turn out to be different and you lose all your um, um, hope and everything. So it's better, I feel, uh, than pinning your uh, inspiration on a so-called big and famous person than to draw your inspiration from your own uh, work that had an impact. If you take your, your own work and the impact that it has as an inspiration, then it lasts and it it, it's from within and that is the most sustained way of feeling good about what you did and drawing energy from the impact of the last work to do the next one. Um, that's how I, uh, in my case, um, look at things. And secondly, I think it's not even necessary to have an inspiration or some great, you know, packet of energy from somewhere. I feel that being human, we should have the empathy to do things to help others grow or learn. And it should not need some outwardly or outside energy, just as I often say 
if you see your house is burning, you don't need an inspiration to throw water, run around with buckets, and you, you don't really say, uh, who this person inspired me. It's not at all surprising. It's just you're doing your duty. So if there is a problem, if children are uh, finding it hard, hard to understand, if children are failing, you should not have some special great inspiration. You should just be, by, be inspired by the challenges they are facing and the promises they hold if uh, someone did something. And that should, um, the natural human uh, instinct of compassion um, should drive you rather than some special person preaching. So that's what I would say. And I am really, really happy to engage with so many people who believe in uh, sharing this uh, energy with young people uh, who are doing various things themselves and yet find the time and energy and see the importance of uh, touching lives and changing lives. And I'm sure many of these students you are touching will make wonders and will remember you for being a part of that. And even if they don't remember, just the fact that things change for them is more than good enough to see and smile and find the energy for the next good thing that you do. That's all I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you.